All right, so let's go ahead and start uh, with the uh, the passport stuff. Well, the first thing that we'll do actually is we'll generate a new module using the CLI tool. So what I'll do is I'll type, let me actually remove, uh, well not remove, let me zoom in just a little bit. Cause I know there's a lot of text on the screen. So I wanna make sure you all can see this. So, whoops. Okay, so we'll do nest G for generate. Uh, module and I'm going to call this auth for authentication okay so this is going to create the module for us right over here and we're going to go ahead and create a couple things we're going to create a controller and a service so what I'm going to do is I'll do nest g controller uh, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, auth well this is going to go inside the auth controller so uh, let's see it should be fine. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that this goes inside that auth module, which is great. And it created a folder for us and it created a subfolder called auth. Now, um, let's see, I want to, I'm actually going to do this instead. Um, let me generate the service real quick. And I'm going to kind of like refactor the folder real quick because I don't really like this structure, to be honest with you. Uh, and I didn't really want to manually create it too. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take this auth controller and I'm going to move this inside here. And I'm going to create a folder called tests. And I'm going to move all of the tests in there. So I'm going to do that and move that in there. And I'm going to move this auth service.ts inside the services folder. Again, you don't have to do this. If you, I, I just personally prefer doing it this way. So, um, and I didn't, I didn't want to manually create these files too, okay? So we have our tests inside here. We have our service and our controller. We're really only going to have one controller and one service inside this auth module, okay? And let's just make sure the, uh, the paths are configured properly. Okay, perfect. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and set up a couple routes, okay? So inside the auth controller, uh, Let's see, we can also see that the the auth controller was mapped correctly, so that's good. Before I do this, before I do anything inside here, let's go inside main.ts. Remember, we do need to make sure we have our uh, our API prefixed with that API. So app.enable or set global prefix API. So what this will do is it'll prefix every route with slash API. You can see down over here, it says uh, mapped auth controller route. Uh, slash API slash auth right over there. So that's exactly what we want. Okay, uh, cool. That's literally all we needed to do. Uh, we can go over here now. And I'm going to go ahead and do this inside. I'm going to create a new folder called utils. And I'm going to create a file called constant. So uh, it's good practice to create uh, constant variables. Or you can, or in TypeScript, we can use something called enums. It's always good to use that. So instead of having like a hard coded value, we can do that instead. So that so I'm I'm, I'm pretty much talking about this hard coded string over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an enum and I'm going to call this uh, routes. Okay, whoops. And an enum is you can think of an enum as uh, you can think of an enum like an object that has constant values. So you can reuse them over and over again. So for auth, it's just going to be auth. We are going to have other routes too, but for now, I'll just leave this alone and just leave it as auth. Oh, and that, that's supposed to be lowercase auth. So the way we use the enum now is we can import routes and we need to make sure it comes from that utils constants folder right there. And then we're going to hit a dot auth. Whoops. There we go. So that'll literally work the same way. So now I don't have to have hard-coded values inside my code. Okay, now that we've done that, uh, and we will do the same thing with other stuff too, so don't worry. We're gonna go ahead and set up a couple routes. So the routes that we need, we're gonna need a login route. So let's go ahead and do get. So the login route, it's a little bit tricky with OAuth 2 because the way with OAuth 2 is you're gonna have to use or visit the route 
and when they visit the route it's going to invoke passport if you're using uh, it's going to invoke the oauth2 password strategy if you're using like regular pass uh, username password or email password login it would be a post request okay but for the oauth2 it's going to be a get request okay i know it sounds a little bit weird but you know just stick with it so this is going to be the login route and we're going to go ahead and do uh, we're going to call this function login and we'll just create the handlers for now okay we're also going to have a redirect route as well uh and this will just be redirect this will just be responsible for redirecting to the to the front end application we're going to have a route that handles uh the status the authentication status so this will allow us to know if the user is logged in or not and we're going to have a route for logout this i'm going to make it a i'll make this a post request and this will literally just log out the user whoops okay now what do we do next how do we uh how do we ensure that these routes are working uh properly with uh with um our discord strategy or or, or password rather let me just verify something real quick api auth okay perfect redirect perfect okay so what we need to do next after we've created our routes we need to go ahead and configure uh, our discord strategy okay now in order to do that we need to obviously install passport as well as the discord passport strategy so let's go ahead and do that so what we're going to do is inside let me go ahead and just remove this tab we'll open it later if we need it inside our console or terminal we're going to install a couple of dependencies now for passport in order to get this to work okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install uh let's see nsjs slash passport install the regular passport library and then we're going to install the uh the discord passport uh the discord passport library which is just called passport discord like that okay uh and let's go ahead and just hit whoops let's hit enter okay so that's three dependencies we're going to install one more we're going to install the types okay and then what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and create our passport file which is going to handle pretty much everything that we need or not the passport file sorry the strategy file okay so essentially when we create that strategy file it's going to take care of handling uh it's going to take care of handling the user that is logging in okay so what we're going to do first is we're going to go inside let's see uh i think what i'll do is inside auth i'll create a folder called utils and I'll go ahead and create a file called discord strategy .ts. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create a class for this called discord strategy. And it's going to expand or extend passport strategy. Okay. And this is actually a function. Passport strategy is actually a function and we need to pass in the actual strategy uh so i'll show you how to do that so we're going to import from passport discord we're going to import this strategy uh right over here and we're going to pass in strategy just like that okay so from here on what we can do is we can go ahead and set up a constructor which we're then going to actually need to inject a inject the auth service which we have created here but we, we haven't set this up yet so don't worry about that right now but we will need the auth service because inside this strategy file this is responsible for uh it's responsible for handling the validation okay and i'll explain a little bit more about that in just a second but let's just for now set up the constructor we're going to go ahead and call the super class constructor because we are extending a class. So this, so whatever class this passport strategy function returns, that's what we're extending and we need to call the super class constructor. And we're going, since we're using OAuth2, we're going to need to pass in the client ID. 
Okay, we're going to, to pass in the client secret, the callback URL, as well as the scopes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the client ID, which is literally coming from the environment variables right over here. Okay, so I'm sure we, we should be able to reference these without any issues. So I will also console log them just to make sure that they are okay. I don't think we should have any problems with it though. So anyways. And the callback URL. Discord. Redirect. And then last but not least, the scope or scope. Yeah. So the scope is going to be identify, email, and I think it's guilds. So it's important that you have these scopes set because the Discord strategy or the passport library is actually going to take care of generating the correct URL for the user to redirect to um, when they try to log in. And, and, and it'll, it'll make sense when we see it in action. Okay, so we actually don't even need to generate that hard coded URL from the Discord developer portal because Passport will do it for us. Okay, now one more thing that I need to do is let me actually use the injectable right over here. Okay, so we can make this class uh, injectable into any of our modules or any class. And then we're going to go ahead and implement the validate method. Okay, so this is going to allow us to uh, retrieve the access token which we're not doing anything with that right now and the refresh token and the, but most importantly it will allow us to get the profile which is the discord user that is logging in so we can type annotate this with the profile interface that comes from passport discord okay so let's go ahead and just console log uh discord strategy validate method and let's go ahead and console log profile dots we, and you can see that we can actually console log a bunch of different things so if i want to console log the username i can okay uh so one thing that i will mention is that we will come back to this validate method in just a bit but this validate method is what we need this validate method is very important because this value method will allow Passport to actually properly log the user in, okay? But what we need to do is we actually need to set up the auth service now because what's going to happen is this strategy, this Discord strategy is going to need to call this auth service. It's going to need to inject this auth service, okay? And it's going to be able to call its methods. Inside the auth service, what we need to do is we need to implement a method to actually create or validate the user. So what that means is, let's say for example, if the user uh, has never signed up or never logged in with into our application, then what we'll do is we'll create a user. We'll create a profile for them. However, if the user has logged in before, which we're, we're gonna find that out by searching for the user, then what we'll do is we'll just return that user, okay? So whatever we return from the auth service into this validate method, um, that's what's going to uh, that's what's going to be uh, serialized into the session. If we were using regular username and uh, username and password login, uh, this would be a lot different. This would actually return the user if the user typed in the correct uh, credentials. If they typed in the wrong credentials, we would actually just return null or throw an error, for example. Okay, so I thought I would explain that just a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step which is literally just going to be setting up the auth service, okay?